of the King. Loving God, would you speak into our hearts today, through your word, by your Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I wonder if you have a favourite film with a twist in the plot. I remember getting annoyed at the film The Usual Suspects in the 1990s. I won't spoil it in case anyone hasn't seen it, but all through the film you learn about the mysterious and dark figure of Kaiser Zose. And at the end there's an unexpected twist that I found very frustrating because I felt that I'd wasted two hours of my life watching all of the film that went before. There are other classic films with twists. I think of The Sixth Sense, that was a classic one, where there's a twist at the end. I'm sure you can think of others. The twist can be thrilling and exciting. The twist suddenly makes you re-evaluate everything you have seen up, into, up to that point. It might cause you to see everything differently. And I think this is what the epiphanies of Jesus are like. Suddenly something new is revealed that causes those who see it to stop and re-evaluate everything they have seen up to that point. If they are paying attention, that is. Up to the time of Jesus, the Israelite people had learned that they must witness to the one true God. One of the most important scriptures to all the Israelites that they should learn was from Deuteronomy. And it goes, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. The God of the Israelites, the God whom they worshipped, was the one God. Not like the different gods that the pagan people around them worshipped. They learned that it was important to worship only the one true God, the maker of all things. They learned that God created everything. So there was God. And there was everything that was created. And unlike the pagan people following religions who worshipped created things, sun, moon, animals, trees, or things that people, human hands had made, carvings and statues, the Israelite people were to worship only the invisible God who made the sun and moon and living things and everything else. And those things we uphold in Christian teaching. But the baptism of Jesus was one event that brought a new revelation of what God is like and caused people to reevaluate everything that had gone before. The baptism of Jesus is one of the few scenes from the life of Jesus that is recorded in all four Gospels. And that tells us that the people who brought these stories together considered this scene crucial to the story of Jesus. Luke's Gospel that we've read today tells us that Jesus joined in with the people who came to be baptised by John. And when he had been baptised, it says, the heaven was opened. The Holy Spirit descended in a form that was visible to people. And a voice from heaven said, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. This moment passes in a flash and we have to press pause on this picture. Those who were there did, didn't necessarily realise what they were seeing. We are seeing that the Son, Jesus, the Spirit, and the voice of the Father in heaven are God. We are seeing a picture of three in God. There's Jesus, a very normal looking human being, 
who has just been baptised, immersed in a dirty river along with lots of other people. We hear the voice of the Father thundering from heaven, proclaiming that the Son is beloved. And we see the Holy Spirit connecting heaven and earth, communicating the love between the Father and the Son. This picture of God is an earth-shattering, mind-blowing picture of God. We see God in Jesus inhabiting our humanity. And heaven is shouting, this is my son. And in this moment, we see not only a picture of God, we are invited into this picture. Jesus stands in this picture on behalf of all humanity. God offers for us to participate in this relationship of love between the Father and the Son. Because Jesus Christ has become human, God also speaks these words of love over each of us. You are my beloved child. You are my beloved child. Jesus was baptised along with everyone else who was coming to John. In the River Jordan, this dirty river, Jesus shared in the reality of human experience, not protected or privileged. And so God reached every one of us and offered every person fullness of life. And so our baptism invites us into this picture of Jesus' baptism. We are welcome to participate in what God has made possible by Jesus becoming human, what the Church calls the Incarnation. I believe these things are life-transforming. The knowledge of God's complete love for each one of us, and knowing our identity as God's beloved children, and being welcomed into communion with God by the Holy Spirit, who connects and unites us. In my life, I have struggled to accept this knowledge. God's complete love for me, my identity in God through Christ, and the Holy Spirit uniting me to Christ. Some years ago, I had a dream that helped me, and perhaps we'll connect this with you. In the dream that I had, I was approaching a group of people in motion, moving around almost like a human carousel. And I knew that God was at the centre, also in motion. And as I approached the threshold of all this movement, I doubted that I could join in. I saw the people moving, all in the same direction, around the centre, dancing in harmony with each other, moving in between each other, and each with their own unique movements. I wanted to join in. And I came up with a movement of my body that seemed too small for the dance that was going on. But then I saw, saw someone in the dance pass me and copy the movement that I had made and incorporate it into the beautiful movement they were doing and as they spun and moved in harmony with the others. And suddenly I was in the dance and part of this beautiful motion that was going on with God at the centre. And this is something like how our baptism joins 
us with God. The Holy Spirit invites us into relationship with God and with others. And the Spirit joins us into the beautiful work that God is doing. The work of bringing the world back into harmony with God through Jesus Christ. And our baptism is not just something that has happened to us in the past and that's it. We can rediscover, we can explore what our baptism means. What it is that God has invited us and welcomed us into. Perhaps that sense of wonder of what God has given us has been lost. I know I easily forget the joy and wonder of what God has done for me, and I need frequent reminding. So, in a moment today, we're going to give thanks for our baptism, and we're, Brian and I are going to go to the font. And as we have the opportunity to give thanks for our baptism. Let's allow God to work in this moment. Perhaps God wants to show us something about who God is. Or perhaps God wants to show us who we are in Christ. Or perhaps something about our place in God's work of reconciliation. So today, seeing this picture of Christ's baptism, we come ourselves to the water again. The water that reminds us of who God is, what God has done, and who we are in the light of Christ. Amen. Amen.